Hey y'all, welcome back. Let's jump into today's review. We're reviewing uh, all the content that we learned in Unit 3, which is primarily all about solving equations, but also we touched on how to use different trigonometric identities uh, to solve certain kinds of problems. So we'll, we'll get into those too. Um, but the big focus here is on solving equations. So we'll go through all these equations we've got to solve um, and the different techniques we need to know, um, things to look out for, um, and then we'll get into these sum and difference identities and how we uh, use those and then the double and half angles towards the end. So let's start at the beginning. Uh, we've got 2 sine x plus 3 uh, equals 2. So the first thing we want to do here is we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. And so that's going to give me 2 sine x equals negative 1. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Show my little work here, divide by two. So that means I'll have sine of x equals negative one half. Now this really gets at the root of what you should know coming out of this unit. And that is how to find an unknown when it's stuck inside a trig function. So um, to find the value here, we're gonna use the unit circle. Let me go ahead and pull that up. And we're gonna try to identify for what angle measures uh, does sine equal negative one-half? Now recall that sine, uh, we find the values for sine around the unit circle by looking at the y-coordinates. So I look over at my uh, unit circle over there, and uh, I'm trying to find wherever um, the y-value is negative one-half. So it looks like I see one at 7 pi over 6, and uh, mm -hmm. looks like 11 pi over 6. So I'm going to rewrite, I'm gonna, or not rewrite, but I'm going to write my solutions here. And since I'm writing the general solution, this means I need to include every single solution that, uh, that will satisfy, or every single value that will satisfy this equation. And so this is going to be how I write that. I'm going to start by doing pi over 6, or I'm sorry, not pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. But I will find more solutions if I add... 2 pi or subtract 2 pi or any multiple of 2 pi um, to or from these values. All right, essentially what you're going to be listing are all the angles that are also coterminal to these two. Um, so the most efficient way to write that is just to write 2 plus 2 pi n um, with the assumption being that n could be any integer. And this will be uh, all of the solutions. Now, uh, sometimes, and I think I do this later on, I will restrict the, you know, I'll restrict you to an interval to where I only want the solutions that are between 0 and 2 pi, in which case I wouldn't need to write this plus 2 pi in. I would just write out the specific angle measures uh, that satisfy uh, uh, and that are in that interval. For number two, we're going to start by adding 3 to both sides. So that'll give me 4 cosine squared x equals 3. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 4. That gives me cosine squared x equals 3 fourths. When I take the square root of both sides, I need to make sure to include a plus or minus. So plus or minus. The square root of 3 is just square root of 3, and the square root of 4 is 2. Okay. Again, I got this by taking the square root of both sides and including a plus or minus, okay? So um, now I'm looking for all of the angle measures where the cosine value is either positive root 3 over 2 or negative root 3 over 2. And I'll find those, there's going to be four of them. Um, I'll find those on the unit circle. Oh, my unit circle's still up. Let me hide that real quick so you can see my work. Um, or you know what? We're going to need that unit circle anyway. Let me just, oh, pulling the wrong thing. Okay, get it together, Mr. Schuler. All right, there we go. So, um, so we're looking for where the, you know, the x coordinate is either positive root 3 over 2 or negative root 3 over 2. And I see that we have four of them. Okay, um, I just copied and pasted this. So let's see if we can identify them. We're looking for the first angle. Uh, is going to be at pi over 6. Oh, I guess I could have kept that. 
Uh, and the next one is going to be, looks like 5 pi over 6. And then the next one is 7 pi over 6. If it'll let me do the pi, there we go. 7 pi over 6, and then the last one it looks like is 11 pi over 6. Okay, so those would be the solutions to that equation. Let's hide this before I forget to. Uh, okay, yeah, let's look at number three. The number three is a little different. Notice in number three, we've got a coefficient inside the parentheses. So we will take care of that after we find our angle measures. Okay, so the first thing to do is find where is tangent equal to root three. So we're looking for um, some angle measure on the unit circle, so let's bring that back up, where the ratio of the y coordinate to the x coordinate is root three. So we're kind of looking for a y coordinate that's root three over two, and an x coordinate that is one over two. Or maybe they could both be negative and you would divide out to get a positive. So that's gonna happen at, looks like pi over three, and four pi over three. So there's not really like a step to show before we get there because we're, the, the, the trig function is already isolated. So we're just gonna say that instead of x, we've got two x equals these angle measures. Uh, what did I say they were? Uh, let's get rid of that, root three. So, uh, so pi over three and uh, four pi over three, okay? But in this case, we're not quite done because we do need to get rid of this two. So we're gonna divide everything by two, including this side. So our final answer is going to be x equals pi over 3 divided by 2 is pi over 6, 4 pi over 3 divided by 2 is pi, 4 pi over 6, and then 2 divided by 2 is 1, so we just have plus pi n. Now this one right here can be simplified, so just like keep an eye on that. Uh, 4 over 6 can be reduced to 2 over 3. And so those would be our solution, uh, this would be our general solution here. These are the two solutions on the first cycle. Um, it is worth noting that the, the period of this is, is going to be pi because we've got a, uh, or not the, well, let me, let me back that, that statement up. The first cycle, like these two um, are going, going to be in between 0 and pi. So that if I were to ask for all the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, you would need to include the next two angle measures, and you would get that by just adding pi. So like if I add pi to this, I get 7 pi over 6, and if I add pi to this, I get 5 pi over 3. So those are also solutions that are in the interval 0 to 2 pi. Now this one's just asking for all the solutions, so we don't really need to worry about that uh, because we've written all the solutions already. But if I were to, you know, try to, try to trick you, <laughs> so, not trick you, but if I were to, to ask for this, you'd have to be kind of careful about which ones that you're reporting back to me, and you'd include those next two. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and hide that, and we'll do number four. For number four, uh, this is going to be a factoring problem where we can factor out a cosine of 3x. Um, and then we'll be left with 2 cosine of 3x plus 1 equals 0. From here, we can use the zero product property to set each of these factors equal to 0. Looks like I got uh, my bracket here. It didn't turn out like I wanted it to. There we go. And so what we'll have is cosine of 3x equals 0. And then I'm going to kind of do these steps mentally here. I would have 2 times cosine of 3x plus 1 equals 0. Um, but then to solve for cosine of 3x, I would subtract 1 and then divide by 2, which would result in cosine of 3x equals negative 1 half. So I'm looking for all the values. Um, where are all the angle measures where cosine is giving me a value of either zero or negative one half. So I'm looking for the x coordinates around the unit circle where that happens. So cosine, uh, uh, cosine is zero at pi over two and three pi over two. 
and cosine is negative one half. Uh, let's bring up that unit circle just so we can kind of look at it. Uh, so yeah, so you can see uh, cosine is zero at pi over two and three pi over two, and then cosine is negative one half at two pi over three. Two pi over three and um, four pi over three. So those would be the four solutions on that first cycle. Uh, but we do need to divide everything by three. So let's go ahead and do that. I think the, the real key thing to remember here is that you don't want to do this division until after you've already found your angle measures. Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa. There we go. All right, so we get x equals, divide by 3 is going to uh, is gonna be pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, uh, 2 thirds divided by 3 is going to be pi, 2 over 9, and we got 4 over 9. Okay, and then 2 divided by 3 is just 2 thirds, so we'll say 2 pi over 3. So uh, it looks like we got a couple things here that can be reduced. 3 over 6 reduces to pi over 2. 2 over 9, that doesn't reduce, and 4 over 9 doesn't reduce either. So there we go. All right, so those are going to be our solutions. Let's take a look at number 5. Get rid of this unit circle here. For number 5... Uh, this is going to be one where we have to square both sides. This is really going to be a two-parter here. Uh, where we're, going to, we're going to implement two strategies. One is we need to square both sides. And in doing so, we will use one of the Pythagorean identities to make a substitution and allow us to actually solve this out. So let's start by squaring both sides. Just be real careful when you square that right-hand side that you're actually squaring the entire expression and not just squaring the individual terms. In other words, the right-hand side should not become secant squared plus one. It's not just this thing squared and this thing squared. You actually have to multiply this by itself and FOIL that out. And so what you get is, um, well, the left-hand side's pretty obvious, but the right-hand side you get secant squared x minus two secant x plus one. So just be careful how you square this out. Let me know if you, uh, you know, have a question about how you do that, and I can go into more detail. Um, but now we see, okay, so now we need to rewrite this tangent squared uh, in terms of secant, and that's going to be one of our Pythagorean identities. And just like I've told you, like, I don't have all of them memorized. The really, the only one I have memorized is this one right here, because you can derive all of the rest of them from here. So the thought, I'll just kind of talk through my thought process on how I figure out, okay, well, what is the Pythagorean identity for tangent, you know, to rewrite it in terms of secant. If I want a tangent in, in this equation, I need sine over cosine. So what I would want to do is divide each of these by cosine squared. So sine squared divided by cosine squared is going to give me the tangent squared that I'm looking for. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared is going to be 1. And then 1 divided by cosine squared is going to be secant squared. So if I want to make a replacement for tangent, tangent is going to equal secant squared minus 1. Okay? So that's, that's just how I think about it. You know, I, I try not to, I try to minimize the amount of stuff that I'm actually memorizing and more just try to pay attention to where these equations are even coming from. You know, yeah, I've got that one memorized, but from there you can get all of them, really. Uh, okay, so now I've got this. Um, I can subtract the secant squared x from both sides, and these two will cancel each other out. Um, for the rest of it, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pull everything to the left hand side um, so that I can set it equal to zero and just kind of see where I'm at there. So I'm gonna add two secant x to both sides, and I'm going to subtract one from both sides. Uh, so I get this, and then now I've got a nice little linear-ish equation uh, to solve here. I'm going to add 2 and then divide by 2, and that's going to leave me with secant x equals 1. 
Whenever you have a, one of these reciprocal functions, um, I would highly recommend, instead of using the unit circle at this point, is to reciprocate both sides and then use the unit circle. So the reciprocal of secant x is cosine x, and the reciprocal of one is just one. So that actually doesn't change uh, because one over one, if you flip that fraction, it's still gonna be one over one. So now I'm gonna use the unit circle, okay? Hopefully you can kind of figure that out. At this point, you know, we've been working with the unit circle for so long and I've been drilling it into y'all's brains. Hopefully it's kind of found a nice little spot to nestle in there. Um, Hopefully you, you know what cosine, is, uh, what cosine of what angle is one, but if not, um, let's just pull up that unit circle and we can see that clearly it is at uh, zero. Okay, so x is gonna equal zero. When you just have one angle measure here, you technically don't really need the braces. The brace, those set brackets are for if you have multiple solutions in here that we need to add two pi n to. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it for the sake of consistency. Um, I guess what I'm saying is when you just have a, si a single solution here, you don't need the brackets, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it just so that my solutions all basically look the same. Okay, number six, um, looks like we're gonna have to use another Pythagorean identity on this one. Um, so sine squared x, this is the one you should have memorized, is equal to one minus cosine squared x going to make that little replacement there, equals uh, 6 cosine x. I'm just going to go ahead and distribute that, plus 6. And so it's looking like, oh, goodness, goodness, got to get rid of that unit circle. Get out of there. It's looking like um, this is going to turn into a factoring problem. Uh, I'm going to try to get everything to one side and then go from there. So I'll add the cosine squared and subtract the 1. And so that'll give me cosine squared x plus 6 cosine x, and then 6 minus 1 is going to be plus 5. So when you're trying to factor this, um, what I want you to be thinking about is, you know, a similar problem might be like x squared plus 6x plus 5, and then sometimes it's just easier to think about what the factors are going to be when you write it like this. Uh, so I'm just doing a little bit of scratch work over here. So two uh, terms that multiply to give me x squared are x and x. And two terms that multiply to give me 5. Since 5 is prime, I don't really have any choices here, but 5 and 1. And then just to check to make sure that uh, this works, x times 1 is 1x, and 5 times x is 5x. 1x plus 5x is 6x, so I am good to go here. So I don't have x, though. I have cosine of x. So the, really the only difference here is I'm going to write cosine of x uh, plus 5. Um, I guess I can do brackets here just to make this a little bit more obvious. Uh, and then cosine of x uh, plus 1. All right, so now that I factored, I can use the zero product property to set each one of these equal to zero and solve. The factor to the left is going to give me cosine of x equals negative 5. And the one to the right is going to be cosine of x equals negative 1. Now, the range for the cosine function, it goes from negative 1 to 1. So it's never going to get to negative 5. You know, if you imagine the graph, for instance, the graph of cosine, you know, does this little wave function, this little sinusoidal wave. Um, but the range only goes from negative 1 to 1. It never gets up to, or gets low enough to get to negative 5. So uh, this is going to produce no solutions right here. So the only solutions we're going to get uh, are going to be from, from this one. So say x equals, now the angle measure where cosine equals negative 1 uh, is going to be pi. So we're going to say, well, that's it, I guess, pi plus 2 pi n. Here's another case where you don't really need the braces, uh, but it doesn't hurt to keep them. Uh, okay, good. You know what? Let's, uh, let's just press pause here for a minute. Let's just uh, hold the phone. I forgot to mention one thing. 
going back to number five, okay? Whenever you square both sides, you've got to check for extraneous solutions to make sure that this actually works. So let's check. Tangent of zero, let's pull up the unit circle. Tangent of zero is going to be zero over one, so that's zero, okay? So tangent of zero is zero. Secant of zero is the reciprocal of uh, the cosine. So that'd be the reciprocal of one, which is just one. So this would be one minus one. Uh, so does zero equal one minus one? Checks out. So we actually get no extraneous solutions here, but you do need to be on the lookout for extraneous solutions anytime that you square both sides. Okay. Okay, let's take a look at number seven. For number seven, it looks like we've got another Pythagorean identity substitution we've got to make. In this case, we're going to re rewrite cosine squared in terms of sine. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. We've got four sine of x plus four equals three times what we're going to make, what we're going to replace cosine squared with, which is one minus sine squared x. Thought I had that in there. Uh, so we need to distribute uh, what? Okay, well, um, I don't know what, what just happened there. Let's re type this real quick. Okay. So yeah, going back to what I was saying, we need to distribute the three, okay? And let's go ahead and type what we got there. All right, now uh, I'm going to collect all of my terms on one side, try to get it set equal to zero. So I'm gonna add three sine squared x to both sides. plus four sine x, and then I'm gonna have four minus three is one. So I'm gonna be looking for how to factor this. Luckily our numbers are pretty small, so we're not gonna have a ton of options here. Um, we, know the, we know it's gonna look something like this, something, some binomial times another binomial equals something, uh, or equals zero. So let's see what it's gonna equal. Uh, so we got, three sine squared x. So one of them has got to be three sine x, and one of them, oh, uh, let's see, here we go. Three sine x, and then the other first term has got to be sine x. Now for the secondary term, uh, they've got to multiply to give me positive one, and since my middle term's positive, I really don't have a choice here. It's just plus one plus one. And let's check and make sure that works. So three times one is three, one times one is one, three and one is four, so that checks out. Okay, so now we're gonna set each of these factors equal to zero using the product pro uh, zero product property. So I'm gonna get sine of x equals negative one third and sine of x equals negative one. Now for this first one, negative one third is not gonna be something that's on the unit circle. So we'll need to use a calculator to evaluate that. The second one, uh, we don't really need the calculator to evaluate this one. Um, so, you know, sine is, that's gonna be pi over two, but we need to figure out where this is gonna happen. I want you to look at the unit circle and kind of imagine where, oh, there we go, and imagine where it's going to be, okay? So, you know, you can see where negative one half is, so it's going to be like right above like the 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6 line. Um, I wish I could draw on this, but uh, how, would, how would I do that? Could I just like copy this? Uh, nope, that didn't work. I got one quick idea here. Let's see if this works. 
Oh, come on, open, open, open. All right, moment of truth here. Let's 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 hide this. What is going on here? Oh, it worked. Okay, look at that. That's awesome. Okay, so yeah, let's bring this in here because what I just want to kind of give you a visual here for where we're looking for this solution. Okay, um, so signs referring to the y coordinate, which is negative one third. So right here, seven power six the y coordinates negative one half. So that gives us a little reference that negative one half is right here. Okay, here's where negative one half is on the y axis. So negative one third is smaller than that. So it's gonna be somewhere over here. So we can expect our radians to be a little bit more than pi um, and almost at two pi. Okay, because what we're, the angle measures that we're looking for are gonna be like right around here and here, okay? So just to give you some frame of reference here, when we type this into the calculator, we're gonna be expecting angle measures that are here, here. Now this one's a little bit more challenging. Uh, oh wait, no, this one uh, actually is not gonna be too challenging because uh, we could just write, you know, plus two pi n. So actually this one's not gonna be so bad. So uh, let's go ahead and throw this in the calculator, see what we get. All right, so uh, let's see here. Let's pull up the calculator so you can see it. There we go. So we're going to do the in. We're going to, first of all, we're gonna make sure we're in radians. So we're going to hit mode. Okay, radians you'll see is right here. So we're good there. Um, so we're going to type in the inverse sine of negative one third. And you only do this when it's something that's not available on your unit circle. Otherwise, you're just going to use the unit circle to give me an exact answer. And so I get this negative 3.33. Uh, now, looking at the little diagram that I've drawn, you can see, oh, wrong one, <laughs> that the negative 0.33 radians is this one right here, okay? We, we want the positive coterminal angle there. So what I need to do is add 2 pi, and that will give me this angle. And then I'll show you how to get this one here in a second. So if I find the coterminal angle here by adding 2 pi, oops, I'm going to get 5.94, which is just under 2 pi. That's kind of what we're expecting, something around there. So let's go ahead and start writing our solutions here. So x is a prox approximately... Uh, 5.9, what is it, 4, 3. And then how are we going to get this other one? Okay, so this, up, this angle right here, you know, what we really want is, is two angles. We want uh, this one and then the one we already got, which is this one. Okay, so the, this one is going to be pi plus this, like, 0.339 that we had before. So I'm going to actually say that it's pi plus that point three three nine eight you know it doesn't really just get at least like three or four decimals in there and we'll hit enter and so there we go some number that's just barely above pi looks good so that's gonna be my other solution here about three point four eight one okay so those are going to be my two solutions on that interval. Uh, now, sine, where sine is negative 1, uh, that's going to be a 3 pi over 2. So we can actually say that one exactly. 3 pi over 2. And then so we've got plus 2 pi n for all the rest of them. All right. Uh, good. Very good. So let's go ahead and get rid of this, all this madness so we can do the next problem. Um, just turn that off. Oh, keep clicking the wrong one. All right, there we go. So yeah, let's, let's delete some of this stuff here, y'all. Okay, the next one uh, looks like I'm going to be using some reciprocal properties here. Okay, so that's a little, a little new here. Um, so for example... 
Uh, oh wait, maybe not. Let's see, what do we got here? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna rewrite this at, I am gonna go ahead and use the reciprocal properties. It's gonna be one over, one over cosine x times one over sine x equals two over cosecant x, so two over sine x. All right, so what happens if we say multiply? You know what we could do? I think, what we, I think the move here is gonna be to reciprocate both sides. I think that's the move here. If I reciprocate both sides, what I get is cosine x times sine x equals sine of x divided by two, or one half sine x. All right, so that just kind of cleans it up a little bit. And where would we want to go from here? Well, um, let's, you know what we could do? I'm going to rewrite this as one half sine of x instead of sine of x divided by two. And I'm going to subtract this from both sides. Okay, so that'll give me cosine x sine x minus a half a sine x equals zero. From here, I can factor out a sine x with the zero product property. I'm not the zero product property as a GCF. Uh, and so I've got sine x times cosine x minus one half. And now I can set each of these equal to zero and solve them individually. Now I'll use a zero product property. So I either have sine of x is zero, or I have got cosine of x equals one half. All right, so let's find out where this happens. Sine of x is zero at zero and so x is going to equal zero which we want to be careful with the zero uh, we want to that you know that I think that one is actually going to cause some problems here uh, you know we might actually have a couple problems here but uh, let's, let's see what happens so zero or pi and then cosine is one half at uh, let's see here. Let's pull up that unit circle just briefly. Uh, cosine is going to be one half at pi over three and five pi over three. Now, the reason I was saying earlier, let's be careful here, is because secant and cosecant are undefined in certain places, so we gotta make sure that those are not the solutions that we, that we got. Um, I think it might actually be okay. Cosecant is going to be, you know what? Cosecant is gonna be undefined whenever sine is zero, right? So, because cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So the, the solutions that we got for sine of x equals zero, these are not gonna work. These are going to be extraneous, okay? So that, like the zero and the pi just start, simply won't work because cosecant of zero, let's pull up that unit circle, it's gonna be the reciprocal of zero, which is undefined. So unfortunately, those are not gonna be solutions. Uh, yeah, so those are what we call extraneous.
Okay, so yeah, we only get pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Oh, goodness, get that unit circle out of there. Okay, yeah, so we're going to delete the 0 and the pi. All right, let's move down here. Find the solutions on this interval. Uh, so we're going to solve these similarly, uh, but we're not going to do the, like the whole plus 2 pi n thing. Uh, we don't need that. We just need to find the solutions that are actually on the interval itself. So number 9, we've got to add 3, which is going to give me 5 cosecant theta. Uh, equals plus 3 will be 5. And then when I divide both sides by 5, I'm going to get cosecant of theta equals 1. Uh, then I can reciprocate both sides. And so I'll get sine of theta oops, equals 1. And so sine of theta will equal 1 at pi over 2, and that's it. All right, we're not including any solutions outside of 0 to 2 pi. So I don't need to write the plus 2 pi n. That's just my only solution there. Uh, for the next one, I'm going to divide both sides by 4. Then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Now the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. The only thing i got to remember is to do this plus or minus. So I'm looking for all the angle measures where sine is either positive 1 half or negative 1 half. And bringing up this, it's always back to the inner circle. You notice that? <laughs> uh, let's see, plus or minus 1 half is going to be pi over 6, five, all the pi over 6s. So pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and finally 11 pi over 6. For number 11, we're going to need to, I feel like we solved one very similar to that, didn't we? Yeah, it's kind of similar to number 6, it looks like. Uh, and we're going to, is it the same problem? No. Uh, so we'll, we'll work it out similarly. We're going to rewrite this as 2, and I'm going to rewrite that sine squared as uh, 1 minus cosine squared. Okay equals, uh, you know what, let's stay consistent here. So we'll use brackets. There we go. Equals, uh, and I'll distribute the 3, so 3 minus 3 cosine theta. Uh, now I need to distribute that 2. So 2 minus 2 cosine squared theta equals 3 minus 3 cosine of theta. And so now I want to get everything to one side, set it equal to 0, and solve it. So this is I'm going to add the 2 squared cosine squared theta over here and then subtract 2. So that'll result in 2 cosine squared theta minus 3 cosine theta. And then we've got 3 minus 2 is 1. And now we're, we're ready to factor. I didn't really give you a ton of room to work this one. I should have I should have given you a little bit more space here. Let's see if we can't squeeze this in. Now, if you're writing this on paper, you don't have this luxury, but uh, I do, so sorry. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and factor this, and that'll be two cosine theta. Um, oh, oops. And then let's see, plus one. So it's gonna have to be minus one minus one if it's gonna work at all. If it doesn't work at all, then we're kind of stuck, but. Uh, hopefully this works. It's minus 1, minus 1. The reason why I know it's going to be negative 1, negative 1, or it has to be, is because since my third term here, my constant, is positive 1, the only two numbers that can multiply to give me positive 1 are either 1 and 1 or negative 1 and negative 1. And seeing that my middle term is negative, they have to be negative if it's going to work at all. So let's see if it works at all. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 1 times 1, that's going to be negative 1. Negative 2, negative 1, add up to negative 3. So uh, we are good to go here. Now we will split this up and set each uh, factor equal to 0. So I'm going to have cosine of theta equals 1 half or cosine of theta equals 1. 
So I'll be looking around the unit circle, and I don't have to do the, pl the plus 2 pi n here. Uh, I just want to find on the unit circle anywhere where cosine is either 1 half or 1. And so it looks like that's going to be at pi over 3, uh, 5 pi over 3, and 0. So 0, pi over 3, and what did I say? Uh, that would be 5 pi over 3. It's got to be. Okay, so that's kind of, you know, a pretty good selection of problems to solve. Okay, there's going to be, you know, you can expect on the test there to be, uh, you know, kind of one of each at least of these different categories of solving. So, like, you can expect a factoring problem. You can expect to, like, have to reciprocate. You can expect just, like, a real basic one, like a linear style. Uh, you can expect one to have, like, a multiple angle, like this one or this one. Um, you know, there's going to be basically one of each on there, at least. Okay, so let's use the sum and difference formulas to find the exact value of each, no decimals or rounding. So this would be a non-calculator question. So let's pull up our sum and difference formulas because you do not have to memorize those. Um, now I'm looking at this and I see cosine cosine plus sine sine. So I look at my formulas over there and I see that's gonna, that correlates to a cosine. So this is gonna equal cosine of you know, a, no, so I gotta decide, it's gonna be plus or minus. Now, if I've got a plus right here, that means that, like, my a plus b is actually gonna be a minus b, like that. Um, and so in this case, a is gonna be 120, and b is gonna be 30, so 120 minus 30 is 90. So again, co cosine of 90. Cosine of 90 degrees is, oh, got that in the wrong place. Let's try that again. There we go. So cosine of 90 degrees is going to be the x-coordinate at 90 degrees, which is going to be 0. <laughs> not as, you know, a little, not very dramatic there, but that's, that's what our answer is going to be. Okay, number 13, same kind of deal. We've got to figure out, first of all, we got a sum formula. And since it's sine, cosine, cosine, sine, I see that's going to be sine. Uh, so that's going to be sine of the first angle plus the second angle. So sine of the pi over 12 plus pi over 4. I'm realizing I didn't really like totally write that out on the last one. So it wouldn't hurt, I think, to just kind of include this over here as well. If I can make this fit, you know, I might just have to move everything else down a little bit. Pardon my... Uh, there we go. So... This would be cosine of 120 minus 30. There we go. Just to, just to kind of clarify where that 90 is coming from. I think it's a good idea. Okay, so over here we're dealing with radians. Um, and so we need to add these together. Find a common denominator, which would be 12. So this pi over 12, or pi over 4, would really be 3 pi over 12. So if we have 1 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12, that would be 4 pi over 12, which can be reduced. Okay, 4 pi over 12 reduces to, uh, if I divide by the, both, both those integers by 4, I get uh, 1 third. Okay. So I get sine of pi over 3, which I can use the, uh, the unit circle for. Look at pi over 3 and give me the y value, which is going to be uh, root 3 over 2. Okay. Okay, moving on. It says angles u and v are in quadrant 3. Sine of u is negative 8 over 17, and tangent of v is 4 thirds. Use the sum and difference formulas to determine the exact values of each. All right, so let's see, we don't really have, uh, we still have a good, decent amount here left. So uh, over here, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to sketch a diagram using these two pieces of information and the fact that we're in quadrant three. 
Uh, so we'll sketch a diagram for each one. Um, gosh, I wish I had a little bit more room here. I guess I'll, I'll kind of squeeze it in down here if I can. So for you, well, try to make that look like a U. Uh, we're in quadrant three. So my triangle is going to look something like this. Since sine of u is negative 8 over 17, I'm going to label the opposite side as negative 8. The hypotenuse is 17. I'll use Pythagorean theorem to find that missing side. So let's pull up the calculator and do that real quick. So we've got 17 squared. Uh, minus 8 squared is going to be the square root of 3. I doubt that's going to be a whole number. No, nope. yeah, so um, it's just, it is what it is. So we get the square root of 353. Wow, what a terrible number. And that will be negative because we're in quadrant 3. Uh, oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, this should be minus up here. Uh, I think I made a mistake. Let's go back up. Yeah, this should be minus. I was going to say, I was pretty sure that was Pythagorean triple, but there we go. Okay, that's a much nicer number. Yeah, that's, that's definitely going to be a, a perfect square. It's going to be 15. Okay, so luckily, we don't get this ugly old number here. We're going to get minus 15. Okay, so that's going to help us evaluate uh, you know, sine, cosine, and tangent of angle U. We're going to do a similar diagram for angle V, which is also happens to be in quadrant 3. Now it says tangent is 4 over 3. Now since we're in quadrant 3, though, both x and y have to be negative, which is why when you divide them, you get a positive. So opposite would be negative 4. Adjacent would be negative 3. And then it's going to be a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So this is going to, this is going to work out quite lovely. Um, okay, so now we're just going to use um, those sum and difference formulas to actually evaluate this. Uh, now, I would expect that you would be able to use a calculator on this because our fractions get a little crazy here. Um, and I don't want arithmetic to be the reason why you get these wrong. So let's just see. So cosine of u minus v is going to be cosine of u times the uh, cosine of v and then plus sine of u times sine of v. Okay, so we're just going to make a bunch of substitutions here and then use our calculator to simplify. So cosine of u is going to be uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be negative 15 over 17 times cosine of v would be negative uh, opposite over hypotenuse 4 fifths plus sine of u, which is opposite over hypotenuse, times, for angle v, the opposite over the hypotenuse. So once you get to this point, go ahead and put it in your calculator. Um, don't try to be a hero. I mean, you could probably, if you spent the time, you could probably get this correct, honestly. It's not impossible by any stretch, but let's, let's save your brain power for the harder ones and let's use the calculator to calculate and let you do the mathematics. So uh, so yeah, I'm just going to type this in. Um, we've got negative 15 over 17 times negative 4 over 5. It doesn't really matter where that negative goes. It could go on the outside of the whole fraction. It could go on the top. It could go on the bottom. As long as there's just one, you're good. Plus Negative 8 over 17 times negative 4 fifths. So you get this nice old fraction, 28 over 85. Okay. 
Uh, so let's do the next one, the sine of u plus v. So this is going to be a similar equation, but I don't know if we're going to fit all these on here. I might have to shrink the size of these. Yeah, I might have to do tangent out, out to the side. Um, so we've already, uh, you know, sine of u plus v. Uh, let's go ahead and look at that. But that's going to be sine of u times the cosine of v plus the cosine of u times the sine of v. And we've already found what all these are. So we don't have to like recalculate or anything. Um, we are just gonna see what do we have to change here. So sine of u is actually gonna be negative eight over 17. Cosine of v is already negative four fifths, so we don't need to change that. Cosine of u is a negative 15 over 17. That's, that's it, that's the only thing we really need to change. So in my calculator, uh, I don't need to retype everything. I'm just going to go up, copy that, and then just change what I need to. So like this, negative 15 is going to be negative 8. And this negative 8 is going to be negative 15. So we get negative, negative 28 over, uh, who would have thought? Okay, so we get negative 28 over 85. All right, for number 16 here, we've got tangent of u minus v. So we're going to use the, uh, the difference formula. Let's go ahead and get rid of this calculator. And I'm going to have to make this a little smaller. Need some room here to work. Okay, so I'm going to have, I'm going to have my formula over here, tangent of u, uh, it's going to be minus tangent of v, over 1 plus tangent of u times tangent of v. Okay, so tangent of u, which is opposite over adjacent, is going to be this negative 8 over negative 15. So a negative divided by a negative is going to be positive. So 8 over 15, that's my tangent of u. And then my tangent of v, so we don't really need that, is um, negative 4 over negative 3, opposite over adjacent. So it'll be 4 thirds divided by 1 plus tangent of u, which we already found was 8 fifteenths, times tangent of v, which we already found was 4 thirds. Okay, and from here, I'm going to go straight to the calculator to simplify this, and I would advise you to do the same thing. Um, so let me pull this up, get the calculator out. And, uh, okay, let's type this in. So we've got, let's go ahead and turn it on. Get a big old fraction going. We've got a fraction and a fraction here. So we got 8 fifteenths minus 4 thirds over 1 plus, oop, didn't catch the one there. One plus eight fifteenths. Times four thirds. All right, so four thirds. And just type that in there and we get an answer. Okay, there we go. 
So our answer here is going to be negative 36 over 77. So that's how you work these triangle problems here. Uh, anytime that I'm giving you some information about one of the trig functions but not actually telling you what the angle is, usually that's an indication that we're going to sketch out uh, a triangle in the correct quadrant and use that to find like the sine, cosine, and tangent of um, whatever that unknown angle is. So before we go to the next one, let's just check. I just want to do a double double check here on, on my answers here. So, um, so cosine of angle U is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that'd be negative 15 over 7. Okay, yeah. Cosine of V. Oh, wait a minute. We got a problem here. Cosine of V is negative 3. It's 3 over 4. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 3 over 5, rather. Um, yeah, yep, that one, that needs to be changed. My bad, y'all, that should be 3 over 5. So, okay, so that's good. So we, we'll go back and recalculate that. Sign of U. Uh, negative 8 over 17 looks good. And then sign of V. This one looks good. Okay, so let's let's retype that in. We gotta change that cosine v to negative three over five. So that's gonna change both of these answers here. Uh, probably not by a lot, but by at least by a little bit. Alright, so let's go up. So start with this one. So if we're gonna change this negative four over five to Oh, you know what? Look at that. I missed a negative on there, too. Oh, gosh. How embarrassing. Good thing I look back at this. Negative 3 fifths, negative 7, and then this needs a negative also. <laughs> 77 over 85. Okay, that's way different. So let's go ahead and fix that. Yeah, okay. So that's 77, and then we'll have to fix this one, too. So this should be negative, thir I wonder if it'll just be negative 77 over 85 again, like, like how the last one was just the opposite, uh, I don't know, let's see. So make that negative, so there's two, two errors in there. So what happens when you go too fast? I get 84 over 85, okay. Okay, so yeah, sorry about that, you gotta, uh, gotta be careful here. You know, one strategy to kind of avoid those mistakes is to go through and actually type, like go through and actually figure out, okay, well, cosine of u is going to be, uh, let's see, that'd be adjacent over hypotenuse would be negative 15 over 7, t. And sine of u would be, uh, Oh, wait, what happened, to, what happened to those blue lines there? That's kind of weird. I'm not sure what happened there. Sine of u is uh, opposite over hypotenuse, so it's negative 8 over 17. Cosine of v is negative 3 over 5. Sine of V is, uh, let's see here, sine would be negative 4 over 5. And then for tangent, um, let's make sure we got those right. Tangent of U, so the adjacent looks good. Tangent of V. Okay, so I'm pretty confident those other ones. Okay, this should be good now. All right, I think we're ready to go on to number 17. Uh, let's get rid of this for, for now. We'll leave the plus or minus on because we're going to need that for the next problem. Uh, okay, so if I want to evaluate cosine of 15, I need to find two angle measures that either add up to 15 or subtract. And uh, so the ones I can think of off the top of my head are going to be 45 minus 30, both of which are angle measures on the unit circle. 
So we can use the difference identity to rewrite this. So I'm going to look over there and say, okay, well, that's going to be cosine of 45. Uh, times the cosine of 30 plus sine of 45 cosine of 30 Okay, so cosine of 45, we're going to use our unit circle. Uh, hopefully you don't need the unit circle to evaluate these, but I'll pull it up anyway just so you can kind of follow along with us. Let's make this a little smaller so you can see. So we really just need, need that first quadrant. Cosine of 45 is going to be root 2 over 2. Cosine, uh, okay, I'll write it like this, actually. Cosine of 30 is going to be uh, root 3 over 2. Mm -hmm. And then sine of 45 is root 2 over 2. And then cosine of 30 uh, would be... Oh, wait a minute, that should be sine. <laughs> cosine of 30 is going to be 1 half. Wait a minute, do I, uh, sine of 30 is not, this is, wait a minute, wait a minute. Cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2, sine of 30 is 1 half. Okay. Whew. All right, so now, this is would be a problem that's a no calculator problem. Um, the arithmetic here is not that bad. You know, when you're dealing with like some crazy fractions up here, you know, I'm okay with you using a calculator to do something like this. But these numbers are pretty small. So I would expect that you could do like, you know, root two times root three is gonna be root six. Two times two, you know, not, nothing bad there is four. Root two times one is just gonna be root two. And then two times two is four. We've got a common denominator, so we can rewrite this as root 6 plus root 2 all over 4 and that's it that's going to be the exact answer here no decimals no rounding nothing like that no calculator needed um, and that's going to be it for that one all right let's do uh, sine of 5 pi over 12 So one way that we can get 5 pi over 12 is by adding, I think it, let's see, pi, let's, we'll check, but I think pi over 4 plus pi over 6 should work. Pi over 4 is 3 pi over 12, and pi over 6 is 2 pi over 12, so 3 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12 is 5 pi over 12. And we'll use the sine sum formula here to still have up. So the sine sum formula looks like this. Sine oh boy. I don't know we're good. Sine of uh, pi over 4 times cosine of pi over 6 plus Cosine of pi over 4 times the sine of pi over 6. So now we're going to evaluate each one of these separately. Sine of pi over 4 is going to be root 2 over 2. Actually, so is cosine of pi over 4. Cosine of pi over 6. Is this the same problem? <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. That, that is unexpected. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. 
Uh, it's not the same problem, but we end, we're going to end up getting the same answer here, I think. Yeah, I mean, look at this. It's the same thing. That is a, a, a surprise, to be sure. Okay. Uh, well, we don't really have to redo our work here, since we can see that we're multiplying and adding the same exact things. Not typical, but it does happen. All right, last page here. Looks like we're dealing with ha uh, double angles and half angles. So uh, let's pull those up. We don't need to sum the difference anymore. We want the half and double. So this is what we have to work with here. Um, and we'll just pick the ones that we need. Uh, but this is going to be another triangle problem because they tell us that uh, the terminal side of theta is in quad or x is in quadrant three. So I'm going to just make a little diagram out to the side here to help me figure out all my values. And the triangle goes down here. It says cosecant is negative five over four. Now cosecant is the Reciprocal of sine, so it's going to be hypotenuse over opposite. Jesus. So we got five, and we got negative four. Okay, it looks like this is going to turn into a three, four, five triangle, but you could use the Pythagorean theorem to find this missing side, and it's negative because we're in quadrant three. So now we could easily find like the sine, the cosine, and the tangent because we have all three sides of the triangle. So for sine of two, uh, two x. Uh, it looks like sine of 2x is going to be 2 times sine x times cosine x. So sine x. Is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so it'll be negative 4 fifths. And cosine of x is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be negative 3 fifths. And so I got 2 times negative 4 times negative 3. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24. 5 times 5 is 25. So there you go. Now, these numbers are pretty small. I would expect you probably could multiply these out. Uh, if these were any bigger, I would let you use a calculator just to be on the safe side. But this is not that bad. 2 times 4 times 3, you know, that's not, that's not too bad. Cosine of 2x, with the cosine doubling formula, we've got a couple options. Um, you can see we've got three options over there. It doesn't really matter which one you pick, so you just pick one. Uh, I'll just pick the first one, just for fun. Okay, cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Again, you don't have to do that. You could do one of the other two, but this they'll all work. They'll all equal the same. So cosine of x, we already found. Cosine of x is going to be negative 3 fifths. And we, we're going to square that. Minus negative 4 fifths squared. Okay, so that would be 9 over 25 minus 16 over 25. 9 minus 16 is negative 7. So that would be our answer. Tangent of 2x is going to be 2 times tangent of x. Over one minus tangent squared x. Now I want to emphasize you don't have to memorize this one. Uh, all of these half and double angle identities will be given to you on the test. You just got to know how to use them. So e equals two. Now we haven't found tangent yet, but it looks like opposite over adjacent is going to be uh, negative four over negative three. Since they're both negative, a negative divided by a negative is positive. So we'll just call it four thirds. 1 minus 4 thirds squared. Okay, yeah, calculator m might be kind of helpful here. I think let's just go ahead and, and do this one in the calculator. 
There will be a few problems on the test where you get to use a calculator, so uh, just know that that is probably going to be an option on a, on a problem like this. Two times four thirds. Over one minus four thirds squared. All right, so here we go negative 24 over 7. That's going to be our answer here. There's uh, 21. Let's take a look at 22, where we're using half angle identities. Uh, so same kind of idea, we're still using this exact same angle. So we already know it's sine, cosine, and tangent equal. Um, but we're just going to use the half angle identity for sine. Now here you got to be a little bit more careful. Uh, because of the plus or minus, you got to decide if it's going to be plus or minus. So since we're in quadrant 3 here, and uh, our y values are negative, so sine will be negative. Hey y'all, so I made a little error here, and um, while most of, the, uh, most of what I did was correct, um, the error I made was a, a little bit of a logic error, because initially in the video I said that this would be negative because x is in quadrant 3, and in quadrant 3, sure enough, sine is negative. But we're not trying to evaluate sine of x here. We're trying to evaluate sine of x over 2. And x over 2 is going to be in quadrant 2. Now, to explain like how I figure out where this is going to be, if we know that angle x, which is right here, is in quadrant 3, even if we don't know exactly what the angle measure is, um, if we're talking about degrees, then we know that uh, that angle measure has got to be between 180 and 270. Uh, 180 being like right here and 270 being down here. So if the angle measures in between there, it's got to be in between 180 and 270. So if x is in between 180 and 270, then x over 2 has got to be in between 90 and 135. 90 degrees is up here, 135 is over here, so we're somewhere in here now. That's where x over 2 is. And the signs for sine... Uh, are different in quadrant two and three. So in the original video, I said this was going to be negative, but it's actually going to be positive because x over two is in quadrant two. So I need to change these to be positive. Um, the rest of the work, as far as like how I'm getting these numbers, should still be pretty good. Um, I think I'm just going to cut it out just because I don't want you to get confused. Uh, so I'll leave this up here for a bit. But um, See if I can drag that over, clean this up a little bit. Uh, don't want to be dragged over. There we go. Um, so uh, yeah, I guess the key thing to t the key takeaway here, and I think I even made this logical error on the uh, the homework for three four. I think I fixed that um, too. But um, basically, when you're doing these half angles and you're trying to determine whether or not it's positive or negative, you got to figure out where x over two is. What quadrant is that in before making your decision? Now, with number 23, um, uh, I, I said it was negative because x was in quadrant 3, but even if it's in quadrant 2, cosine's still negative, so I ended up getting the right answer for number 23, um, uh, even though I, I was sort of citing the wrong quadrant. It's just that cosine happens to have the same sign in quadrants 2 and 3, so it, it ended up being a non-issue here. Uh, but for 24, uh, it, tangent is different. In quadrant 2, tangent's negative, but in quadrant 3, tangent is... Uh, 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 I'm sorry, in quadrant 3, it's, neg it's positive, gosh, and in quadrant 2, it's negative. So that's why I ended up getting a negative answer here. So I'll leave this up just uh, to give you a chance to uh, look through my work here, because uh, I know I'm kind of leaving out a little bit of explanation, but basically all I'm doing 
is choosing the correct formula to use and plugging in the ratio that I got from this triangle I drew earlier. It's using the same ratios that we did in 19 through 21. Um, but yeah, so here are the corrected answers for 22 through 24. Uh, got 2 root 5 over 5, negative root 5 over 5, and negative 2. Okay, so we've got one last section here, and this section will be will not take any time at all, because all it's asking for is for us to practice writing the Pythagorean quotient reciprocal identities. These are ones that you should know. Um, you do not have to memorize the sum, difference, half angle, or double angle identities. So like, you don't have to remember any of these or any of these. These will all be given to you, uh, but you do need to know the rest of these. So let's go ahead and just type them out. Okay, so let's start writing these identities. There's really just one Pythagorean identity, but I want to rewrite it two different ways because you'll, you'll need it in uh, each of those three ways. Uh, so the main one is that sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And then the ones that involve secant and tangent and those other trig functions are really just modifications of this. Uh, we could also rearrange this. I'm not gonna write every single rearrangement possible, but for example, if I'm solving for sine squared x, I can subtract cosine squared x from both sides, and so I'd get sine squared equals one minus cosine squared. And you can, so you can kind of move things around any way you want. Um, now if I divide all of these by sine squared x, I'm gonna get one, all right, sine squared divided by sine squared is one. Cosine squared divided by sine squared is gonna be cotangent squared. And then one divided by sine is going to be cosecant. This is going to be the secondary one. And then the last one I'm going to write here has to do with secant and tangent. And that's what I would get if I divide all this by cosine instead of sine. So if I divide all those by cosine squared, I'm going to get tangent squared plus cosine divided by cosine is 1 equals 1 divided by cosine squared is going to be secant squared. So these are the three sort of key Pythagorean identities. Um, but these two really are just modifications of the, the main one. Uh, so just make sure you know this one and you can get the rest. For the quotient identities, um, those are for tangent and cotangent. Tangent of x equals sine over cosine. And cotangent of x equals cosine over sine. The reciprocal identities are just, you probably already know all these, um, but it doesn't hurt to write them down. The reciprocal of sine is uh, secant or cosecant. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. And the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. And you can rewrite these as well. Like if I solve for cosecant, uh, cosecant is going to equal 1 over sine and so forth. You don't really necessarily need to write every single one of these because they're just modifications of these. Uh, but I guess it couldn't hurt. And so that's pretty much it. All right. Uh, once I get these written down, we're going to be done. As always, y'all let me know if you have any questions. Reach out if you notice, like, a, hey, I messed up on a problem or something. Uh, but other than that, uh, good luck studying, and um, see y'all next time.